Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to Cola Craft, the Learning Bushcraft channel with me. Uh, I'm back in my favourite spot where I come all the time. Um, I've decided I want to start a project. Uh, I've been really bored over the last few days, what with all the coronavirus and stuff that's, uh, that's going on, and all the social distancing that we're being encouraged to do. Uh, I've spent the last few days staring at the same four walls and I'm really bored. So I've come back to my favourite spot where I know I can come, where I know that there's no people around and I'm not going to, uh, not going to risk catching anything. Um, and I decided that I'm, I want to turn the, the spot that I come to a lot into a proper sort of bushcraft shelter. So that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, it'll probably, I'll probably start a series and do this over a few videos. But um, yeah, my plan is to build up a, a shelter um, using the materials that I have around. Uh, I've never done this before, so I've no idea how it's going to go. Um, I've watched a bunch of videos on YouTube and I've read a bunch of stuff uh, from people that built shelters before. So I'm very much going to be kind of winging it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to build up uh, where I where I like to come to camp a lot. Uh, I'm going to build a proper bed with a lean-to shelter uh, with some rain cover. I'm going to build a fire reflector, um, and yeah, and then eventually I'll uh, I'll probably end the uh, the series or the playlist at least by spending a night out here uh, in my new shelter. So that's uh, that's what we're going to be getting up to today. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. It should be a lot of fun. There'll probably be quite a few mistakes, so uh, so we'll learn as we go. But yeah, it should be cool. Let's go. As I always do when I'm here, I'm going to build my shelter between this tree and this tree, um, namely because I really like the view um, that's behind the camera at the moment. It's a really nice landscape that I've shown you um, a few times, and I want to be able to see that when, I, when I'm here. So I'm going to put my bed between these two trees. I'll have uh, I'll put a big ridge pole up as well, uh, and I'll put some uh, bigger sticks going slanting back that way, uh, and then I'll find a way to, uh, to kind of thatch the back of it. I have brought my second tarp, or the, the first tarp that I ever bought, which is quite a cheap one, so I might put that on the back with some ribs to kind of um, provide some rain cover and uh, things like that. I haven't really decided yet, so, uh, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll kind of make it up as we go along. Um, but the first thing I want to do, or the first thing I need to do, is, uh, is make my bed. Uh, apparently, uh, according to the info that I've seen and read, it's best to build your bed first and then build the shelter around it so that you don't have to try and adjust the bed later on and kind of push it back. It's easier to make the rest of your shelter work if you build the bed first. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so the first thing I need for that is four big thick logs that are going to form the base. So I'm going to go and find some of those. There's loads of building materials around where I am, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, so I'll check back on you in two seconds when I've, uh, when I've found those logs. Okay, so you can see how I've set the four bigger logs up, uh, facing inwards toward each other and roughly the same width apart at either end. What I'm then going to do is get two smaller uh, but longer sticks that are about wrist thick and put them across the logs like that. At the moment I can already see that the ground here isn't particularly level so I know I'm going to have to lift the bed up in order to get it, uh, to get it flat, but that's okay, there's ways of doing that, like we can split some wood down and pop it under these bigger logs here. To lift it up so, uh, so that shouldn't be an issue but uh, yeah so two longer sticks to go across that way and then what I'll do is, is I'll find lots of big long poles to go across and actually form my bed um, yeah let's do it So as you might be able to see, uh, this log is currently a little bit on sort of uneven ground, so it's a bit wobbly. Um, so the bed may wobble a bit, but that's okay, because once I've leveled it up, um, if it is slightly unstable, what I'll do is, is I'll form some stakes and drive them into the ground next to my bed to push it all together and keep it, uh, keep it stable. Yeah, so uh, as I said, next thing we need now is the actual main bit of the bed itself, which is lots of long, um, straight uh, sort of trunks and twigs, trees, whatever you want to call them, the head of there to go along across to actually form the base of my bed. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to try and use as much deadfall as I can that's just on the ground to try and do this. I want the sticks to be as straight as possible and with as little knots. Because um, obviously if they have knots or pokies, you know, if I've got a, an air mattress on here, it may end up puncturing it. Um, so we don't want that, so, uh, so I have to try and uh, get them as, as straight and as knot free as possible. Um, but then again, if there are knots, I can always kind of take them out with the, the axe or, or my knife, so it shouldn't be a big issue. Whoa! It's getting hot, man. Whoo! Uh, warm! Okay, so I think my bed is probably now wide enough. Um, but as I said before, it definitely slants. It's definitely leaning towards this way. So I need to get a couple of sticks and get uh, get this side leveled up so it's nice and flat and uh, is more comfy for me. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is grab, um, grab some similar size sticks to this, um, as in thickness, not as in length. Uh, split them down and then I'll put the flat bit on the, on the floor and the rounded bit under my big log over there to, uh, to lift that side. Well, I'm happy with this. Seems nice and stable. I haven't had to tie anything together yet. I'm not rolling around too much, so pretty good. Not bad. It does roll ever so slightly and there is a little bit of a gap so what I might do is it's kind of like a jigsaw trying to fit them together so they, so they fit best. Uh, I might put some stakes on either side just to kind of push it all together um, just on the off chance that it rolls apart while I'm sleeping. Yeah, let's do that. I could just tie it. I don't know.
piece of power cords, too short. First attempt. Can you see me? <laughs> First ever attempt at making a bushcraft bed. Pretty happy with that. Okay, so next things to do are to put a ridge pole up between the two trees um, so that I can make my lean to shelter. And as I said at the start, I want to build a, a fire reflector to go in front of my camp there. So I think that's what I'll do now actually, I'll build the fire reflector. So what I need for the fire reflector is I need four tall staves like, like these actually, like this kind of thickness, ones that I drove in to keep my bed together. Um, they go in a kind of a rectangle and then fit big, usually ideally kind of wet and rotten logs that you're not going to use for firewood uh, and stack them up in between the four um, staves to build something for the heat to bounce off and, and reflect back to you when you're sat or when you're lying in your bed. Um, I don't know if I've explained that very well, I probably haven't, but you'll get you'll get the idea as I put it together. As I said, I've never made one of these before, so this is very much me trialing and error in learning by doing, um, but I'm having a lot of fun. Um, love the fact that the sun's out and it's nice and warm uh, and I can get outside despite all the craziness that's going on in the world. So. Yeah, I feel very blessed. Oh, I'll tell you what I do need. I need a drink of water. It is roasting. I feel really warm, starting to sweat. Need to take some water on, need to hydrate. I've been out for a little while now. So that is priority number one. Then we'll find... <coughs> ah! Here, I'll dry my voices. Then we'll find the staves and start building our fire reflector. This is cool. I'm having fun. I'm going to leave my fire pit where it usually is, which is here, which means I want my fire reflector just kind of behind it, kind of basically where I'm knelt now. So that's quite easy. It is starting to drop off. There's a bit of a hill here, so I need to take that into consideration, but I don't see it being too much of an issue. Uh, and then what I might do is I might make a nice fire pit with some stones uh, around the outside as well, or the inside. I don't know, outside, inside, whichever, this side. Make some, put some stones around this side to make it look uh, look quite cool and make it quite pretty. But yeah, so there we go, that's the plan. Staves, let's do it. <clears throat> Found a nice dead tree that I'm going to use for my staves because, as I say, it doesn't need to be anything overly dramatic. And these bits that I've got here, this tree is relatively straight, which is good. Um, yeah, so I just need four, four pieces, probably about arm length, maybe a bit longer, um, that I will taper the ends off and drive into the, drive into the ground.
way too small. There's a few, <laughs> few holes in it, as you can see, but I think that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna call that good. So I think next up, once I've caught my breath, because I'm knackered, I'm gonna put the ridge pole up, um, which I will then use to start my actual sort of lean-to and start creating the, uh, uh, the what they call the ribs and the, uh, the proper sort of frame. So yeah, I'm gonna grab a drink of water, sit down for a few minutes, and I'll, uh, I'll crack on. Rock and roll, we're getting there, we're getting there. Not looking too shabby for Colo Craft Camp. Not bad at all, although, if you look at that, can you see that? The, lee, the uh, fire reflector does seem to be leaning slightly, but I think it's fairly stable, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Right, water. Oh, it's Mother's Day today. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. Okay, back to it. So, I need a very nice, straight, long pole now to go above my uh, bed, attaching to the two trees that I showed you earlier. I think, I don't want it to be too high, I guess. I don't want it to be too high, it's going over my head. Do I, need to, I don't need to really be able to stand up in it because obviously if I'm in the shelter I'm pretty much going to be on the bench anyway so I guess just kind of, I don't know, Whee. tripping over my own bed. I think maybe sort of chest height would be okay. Anyway, getting ahead of myself, I need to find the stick first. Yeah, so 
it's about 11 paces, this is how I can really measure things, I have to chop that off actually, measure things, put one foot in front of the other to sort of pace out, mark out how far something is, and it's about 11 from, about 11 from tree to tree, about 11 from tree to tree, so obviously I need it to go past the tree a bit so I can actually attach it, so if I reckon 14, maybe 15 of my size 12 booties should, uh, should suffice. So I'm going to need a big tree, so I'm going to go find one. Right, got my nice big stick. Now what I'm going to do is attach it to these two trees. So probably attach it just above that knot, maybe there. Maybe a bit too high. No, I want it, I want it to be, maybe I want it a little bit above my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that tree over there with my knife to point out where I want to tie it. And I'll tie that bit on, um, and I'm going to use a Canadian jam knot. So I'll show you how I how I make one of those. Oh. Okay, I'm having to do this behind the camera because was then when I was the front of it, you just couldn't see the power cord at all because of the light that's going on, the light that's around at the moment, and I know you still can't. See it dressed well, but anyway, this is how you make a Canadian jam. So you take your piece of power cord and you put a normal overhand sort of stopper knot, as you would any other kind of knot, about an inch away from the tail end um, of the power cord. And then you make another, exactly the same thing, you make another one, but you leave it loose on the other side. Okay, so I've got a stopper knot here, tail end, and then a loose knot here. And then what you do is you take the other end of the paracord, once it's around your whatever it is you're tying up, and this end goes through that knot. And then when you tighten it, the loose knot, so this knot, basically tightens up against the bigger first knot you made, um, and it means it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so I'll show you that up on the tree, show you how it actually works. Okay, so I'm resting the tree I'll rest my pole kind of on my shoulder here. And then your paracord, that you've made your knots in already, goes around at a 45 degree angle, okay? Goes around the tree like that. Paracord goes through the end of your Canadian jam knot, and then you just ratchet it up. And then once you're nice and tight, that's not going to go anywhere. Maybe I've done that the wrong way around. Oh no. Did say I was learning. Let's try again. So you get a stick, wrap your paracord around it, and then you avoid burning your hands on the rope itself. You can really ratchet off or snap your rubbish cheap paracord apparently. Awesome. Still learning. So, bed's done. Fire reflector is done. Ridge pole is up. Now we need to find some nice big long sticks to hang from the ridge pole down to the ground to create my lean-to shelter. Um, so things like uh, this. Now this one, as you can see, which has a big bow in it, it's not exactly straight, and ideally I want a straight one, so I'm going to have a look around and see if I can find some more.
So I've decided that given the resources that are available to me, I'm actually going to utilize my tarp. Um, this is the first tarp that I ever bought. It's quite a cheap one. It's got a reflectix side on it as well. So actually, if I put the reflectix on the inside, um, in theory, when the, the fire's going, it will reflect heat back onto me. Um, it is a bit garish because it's silver, which is unfortunate. I don't really want to be looking at silver when I'm, when I'm in bed, but you know, needs must. So um, anyway, so I've done a bit of a kind of a rib work sort of thing. And basically what I'm going to do now is uh, attach my tarp to the back of it to tie it off to where the inside of the trees are coming down to provide some rain cover. Uh, and then what I might do as well, if I have time, is put some ribs going the other way. I think, did I mention that earlier? I can't remember, I might have done. Uh, put some ribs going that way to kind of help support the tarp as well. Um, yeah, so let's do that. <laughs> okay, so I uh, probably should have measured my tarp earlier because it doesn't actually go all the way across, but that's all right. That is not a problem. All it means is that up there, the shelter will be slightly uh, more enclosed, which is absolutely fine. So I'm still going to do the same thing, uh, tie off the tarp to the top and drape it over the back. Uh, if it doesn't come down all the way to the ground, again, not a massive issue. We can pick it out with some paracord and really tie it, cinch it down. So it shouldn't be a, shouldn't be a big problem. So uh, let's try again, take number two. You know what the ribs if these are called ribs i don't know what they're called these poles i think need to actually be on the other side of the tarp that makes a lot more sense so that's what i'm doing now just changing them over um, and i'll show you what it looks like when i'm done wait rolling 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 well, what do you think guys? Not bad, eh? First attempt at ever building a bushcraft shelter. I think I've done pretty well. Um, by no means finished, don't get me wrong. Um, a lot of this was trial and error and I'm sure there's loads and loads of stuff in here that's wrong. But, uh, but I think as, as far as um, progress goes in terms of never building something before, I think we've done really well. We've built a bed that seems to be relatively stable. I've built a fire reflector that seems to stay up. Uh, I've got a top line on, we've got the up, we've built some, uh, we've put some ribs and some dividery things on, which is quite good. So I think all in all, we've done pretty well. Um, as I say, we're by no means finished. There's still loads and loads of stuff to do. Uh, you can already see this starting to bow in. So my plan will be, because I saw Joe Robin do this, is to get some um, some small thinner sticks and put across horizontally this way to keep this up off me uh, against the other ribs. Uh, and then what I actually intend to do um, is try and cover the back with um, debris from the floor, so things like uh, like leaves and twigs and sticks and stuff like that, basically so that you can't see the fact that this is a tarp as best I can. Now I know that this side is silver and that's garish and horrible, but I'm just gonna have to put up with that. Uh, it is what it is, you know. I could, I mean, maybe I could flip the tarp the other way around, but I think because the idea is to leave this here, so particularly in the winter, if it gets cold at night, um, I actually would be quite grateful, I think, of the, uh, of the silver reflecting the heat from the fire. So, yeah, but anyway, as I say, I'm quite proud of uh, what we've achieved so far. There's definitely some kind of aesthetic uh, tinkering that we need to do. Like everything that I've done so far is very, very kind of rough and ready, very, very rough shot. No precision, no finesse, no creativity particularly put into it. Um, so there are some things that I'd like to do. Like for example, I'd like to trim off the end of the bed. So that's all neat and tidy. Um, I'd like to build some sides at some point as well to protect me from the weather that way, uh, which would be really cool. Um, and yeah, as I say, I want to cover the um, cover the back with uh, with dead stuff from the from the woods floor, which would make it look really cool. Um, currently, I think I've got pretty good cover here. My body, when I lie down, oh, oh yeah, comfy. Oh, my body is just about covered. Um, if it were to rain, although I do have a cunning plan for that. My uh, my other tarp. 
because uh, again, I've seen Joe do this. Uh, my other plan is to get the other tarp and put it out that way. Oh my word, there's a heron. Let me see if I can get it. Big pterodactyl, bro. Where are you? Oh, where are you? Ah, bugger. It's gone. Look at the today though, guys. How nice is that? So lucky to be able to come here and not have any worries about corona or seeing people or, you know, having to shake anybody's hand or anything like that. So, very, very blessed to be able to be here. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'll tell you what, why don't I give you a full tour of uh, Colo Craft Camp. So, uh, here we go. So we'll start off right at the back. So I've got some extra building materials there. My fire reflector, my chopping log with the axe still in it, my bed. Which, as I say, I do want to trim the ends off so it actually looks... Oh, my shadow's in the way. I want to trim the ends off so it actually looks a bit nicer. And then this is currently what it looks like from the other side. So, as I say, it's not aesthetically pleasing. I've weighted down the bottom of the tarp with things like a couple of rocks and some big twigs and stuff, just in case the wind kicks up. Um, I don't want it to go anywhere. Hopefully it won't. But, yeah, so the idea will be that this will... The tarp will bunch out a bit once I put the underlying twigs in, uh, the underlying ribs in, I mean. Uh, and then, yeah, cover the cover the back of it with some deadfall stuff, which would make it look pretty cool. So, yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, I mean, because that's going to be it for today, guys. I'm kind of knackered. Um, I've had a long day of building. I haven't eaten much, uh, which I think was a mistake, and I definitely need to hydrate more. I can run out of water, so I need to, um, need to get some more inside me. Uh, but, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. If this is the kind of stuff that you uh, like to see me do, then... Uh, you know, please make sure that you like, subscribe, share this with somebody else, all that kind of stuff. Um, as I said at the start, I'll probably make this into a little bit of a series, probably ending with me spending the night out here in my bushcraft shelter. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will uh, see you in the next one. Take care. Before I left, I decided to upgrade my fire pit a little bit. Put some logs around the side. Looks pretty cool now, eh? Yeah, I like it. Anyway. Peace.